Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So here we are out in the garage again with the Dodge Viper Differential. I got this out of the Viper about a week or so ago. That was kind of phase one. And now we are on to phase two, which is opening it and draining it and then um, taking the actual back up and seeing what went wrong on the inside. So let's jump into it. I'll show you what we got to do and uh, let's get started. First step for today is uh, using some PB Blaster to uh, hopefully loosen this. Ooh, God, that sprays a lot. Hopefully uh, loosen this thing up because this thing was like not moving when I was under the Viper. So we're gonna hopefully get this guy loosened up and opened up, drain him, and then uh, and then go from there. And now slightly to the left of where we just were, the uh, the drain plugs over here. And we're gonna do the same thing with uh, all these drain, well not drain bolts, but just bolts. Yep, so let's let that soak for a bit, then we'll give the drain plug a try. All right, here we are a little while later. I've been letting this uh, PB Blaster penetrating fluid soak. So we're gonna give this a try. This is a uh, 3 8 bit, I believe. Yep, so we're gonna see if we can start moving this guy. There we go. Holy crap, that thing was on so tight. But now once it's broken open, it's, it's moving. It's moving pretty darn good. I don't know what kind of torrent of fluid here is going to come out. That's probably not a good sign. All right, we got we got some draining out. Gonna have to like uh, bucket it and dump it into my oil bin over here. Kind of keep uh, going back and forth. Okay, cool. Bye. Julia's off to the farmer's market. How typical. Wife is going to get food, husband is working on cars. I'm gonna give these bolts another blast of PB Blaster. This thing needs a really bad cleaning too. So as I move this thing around on the bench, draining the oil out of it, I am hearing bits and pieces of something fall around and rattle around inside. It was pretty undeniable that something was broken on the inside, but now it's, it's uh, now it's pretty much confirmed. All right, I think that's pretty good, all things considered, for draining out any more oil. All right, now to get this thing rotated around so that we can start working on the actual cover. Roast, man. Look at all that crud. This thing needs a cleaning. This thing needs to be cleaned. And Julie's back from her farm market adventures. Farmers, from her farmer's market adventures? So when I mentioned to my dad that I was planning on opening up the differential today, he said he uh, wanted to uh, witness in person what the hell went wrong with it. So he's actually pulling in now, and he and I are gonna see if we can get this thing opened up. All right, let's uh, see about getting this guy opened up. All right, half inch is the winner. I'm getting some other ones. Nice. Nice. There we go. Alright, so that couple should come off now? Supposedly. Look at that. Here is here. All right, so there are all these pieces down there. Yes, sir. The shear, the, the head of the bolts bust right off. Damn, man. Damn. All right, you guys, you are seeing firsthand what happened inside the Viper differential. You're seeing bolt heads. You're seeing bolt bodies. All the bolts on the ring gear got completely sheared off. There are definitely more back there. So we got a couple heads here. Another head there, another head there, and then I see two or three more heads under the ring gear. Alright, so actively working on trying to get the bolt carcasses out of the differential case. I wonder if the ring gear got effed up too. Yeah, we'll find out. I've been trying to get this one for a little bit. 
There's one or two more back there. All right, you guys, it's a few minutes later and I believe we got all of the uh, bolt remnants out from the inside of the differential. We got 10 heads and 10 bodies. All right, you guys, with all the sheared bolts accounted for, we are moving forward. Next step is removing the differential's internal strap on the left and the internal strap on the right. Let's go see how it goes. Just like I was doing underneath the Viper when I was taking the differential out, I'm marking everything I possibly can that has a right or left top or bottom orientation. So you see that I've marked it RT, that's for right top. And then the other one is somewhere around here, LT for left top. It's an ongoing attempt to know where everything came from so that I can put everything back exactly the way I found it in the exact place I found it. All right, so the straps are out. The next step is getting the snap rings out of the way. Kind of hard to see in the diagram. So uh, let me go see if I can show you with the camera. All right, where are those freaking things? So there's one right there, and then one right there, kind of in the middle of the middle, so to speak. I got them. Up and mark them. Yep, I'll get it. Just like I've been doing with the previous pieces, I'm marking where they go or where they've come from. So this one is marked R for right, and then this one is marked L for left. And you will actually notice that the left one is taller or longer. So definitely a good idea to keep track of where these things come from. So one of the potential problems that I foresee with this whole process is that the uh, maintenance manual says that we need one of these spreaders. Basically it seems to be this big metal frame thing that you fit around the differential casing. You put these two prongs in on either side and then you basically ratchet this thing and you have to separate differential case in order to get everything else out. But what's especially freaky about that is that it says, I think it's right here, do not spread the differential carrier more than 0 .010 inch. If the carrier spread more than that, then distortion or cracking may occur. And uh, that's pretty damn freaky. So I think we're just gonna try to do this without that because number one, we don't have one. And number two, we don't wanna risk distorting or cracking the case. So uh, yeah. I, that's insane. <sighs> yeah, that does seem insane. All right, so my dad has apparently concocted a plan for how we can try to get the uh, rest of the differential stuff out. It's just, it's just an idea that I have, Trav. It might not work. Hey, if it works without breaking anything, I'm all for it. Okay. Oh, man. Screw spreaders. If you're spreading something .01, that's one one hundredth of an inch. That's insane. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is what the inside of a 1994 Dodge Viper RT10 differential looks like with all the internals removed. These uh, snap clips on the left and the right were incredibly difficult to get out, and uh, it was definitely a two-man job, at least in my opinion. All right, let's get the flashlight here. So I'm very happy to report that the inside of this guy looks actually quite good good, fairly clean, good shape, no crazy damage. I was afraid that like this thing was gonna be shattered or one of the uh, main components was gonna be shattered altogether, but it seems like we only have a case of sheared bolts on the ring gear. Other than that, this thing just needs to be cleaned up. But yeah, it's pretty good, all things considered. Moving on to the actual internals of the differential. Here you go. Here is your ring gear, and this is where the failure took place. And if you look closely, you can see sheared off bolt, 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 sheared off bolt. And that one, interestingly enough, does not have a sheared off bolt in it. This, that's the only partially intact bolt out of the 10. So we're wondering if he was uh, already halfway out or mostly out or had kind of vibrated out over time or was never put in tight enough or what have you. And 
one of the biggest things that I was kind of a bit worried about is if we really did need that spreader device to get this stuff out. And uh, nope, apparently we did not. With such a small margin of error available to us, I did not want to, uh, I did not want to try stretching this casing. We just used the old country boy method and, and wrapped it out with a couple of uh, somewhat light taps. So that's pretty awesome. I'm impressed, I'm somewhat relieved. We've made some pretty major leaps and bounds today. Okay, you guys, and just like that, the differential is apart. Now, unlike taking the differential out of the Viper, this only took me a day, and in fact, it didn't even take me a full day. It just took me a couple hours worth of work. It's just kind of refreshing to have gotten so much done in such a smaller amount of time, I guess. I do have to say, it was hugely helpful to have my dad here. My dad grew up working on cars and doing crazy stuff, and he could have had his own Monster Garage show, I swear to God. He put a Saab engine in a snowmobile, cut a car in half and turned it into a flatbed truck. He had a kick-ass Camaro that he built, and that's hardly even scratching the surface. He has all sorts of awesome uh, car stories, so he knows what he's doing, so it was super, Hugely helpful to have my dad here. In terms of actually fixing it, the options are fairly clear and obvious. Number one, I either buy a completely new differential, but that's kind of ludicrous because I already have a differential. Number two, buying new differential internals. Well, I've got 98, 99% of what I need for a complete differential. So that kind of leads me to option number three, which I think is the most logical and straightforward option, which is just replace what was broken. And the only thing that was broken are the sheared bolts. I've had people tell me I should put in a new ratio, get a little more grunt off the line. Someone said that it would feel like it's plus 80 horsepower. And I would love that, but I'm just not sure I want to put the money into that direction at this point when all these pieces seem to be in perfectly good shape. If, it, if I'd opened everything up and things were shattered and broken and snapped and cracked, then sure, I would be forced to choose a different, a different path. But um, as far as I can tell, everything looks good and usable. So I'm not sure it'd be the best use of my money at this point in the game. So yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I can like see the finish line in the distance, but we're not quite there. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm excited. Even if something does happen and goes go sideways or whatever, the fact that I've gotten this far on my own with some help from my dad today, uh, that that's pretty awesome. In the meantime, I think that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.